Apple Con. All right. Welcome to teacher teaching. Welcome to teachers teaching teachers. It is a Wednesday, May 22nd. And except where Shane is, and it's May 23rd in Australia. And he has to get back to class. So he's going to check in first with us. How are you doing? <laughs> you were about yeah, to good, say something. Good. I, yeah, so I, I went to an AI and education conference in um, Sydney uh, last week and was lucky enough to hear from Ethan Mollick. So if oh my God, um, really? people haven't already checked Ethan Mollick out, he has some really um, good insights. He's sitting in, right over there in the um, corner. No, into just, AI. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell us more. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, so it was saying to hear from, from him, particularly a couple of key points I took away from that is that I was able to detect things written by, by AI. So there's a big, big obsession at the moment with cheating and trying to find ways to identify if people are and that. Um, not only is AI not able to accurately identify that it was written, something was written by AI, but also there's false positives, which is awful because then people who've done the right thing can be persecuted as though they haven't. And it can be very difficult for them to prove that they didn't use AI. And in particular, it's our marginalised groups like people with English as a second language, who often the way they phrase things can be a little bit clunky or not quite on par. And so they can make it seem like they've used the uh, AI to create a piece that they have not. So um, he said, look, just mm -hmm. don't use any of that stuff. We've got to reframe how we look at assessment if that's what we're worried about. And um, and then there was this amazing speaker who um, was a teacher librarian who shared about how she has adopted AI completely into her, her high school program. And so they used AI along each step along the way. And what she assessed was the prompts that they were writing and how they evaluated the output from the AI rather than the final product. So mm -hmm. it was all about how they used that, the AI and critically evaluated the results of the AI is how they showed whether they understood the topic or not um, as, a, as a way of reframing the assessment. I th that was quite revolutionary to me. I, I hadn't heard of that approach and that seemed to have quite a good deal of efficacy and also it meant that it she helped it drove her to teach the right behaviors of how to use the ai talk about bias and talk about how to shape the outcomes that they were looking for from the project so yeah there were a couple of things that stood what, out what to was me. her name do you remember i don't but i've, I've got it in the notes okay uh, i've got yeah, it in my yeah. notes good. from the day so i might shoot an email around or, or send that around because that was was really uh really interesting Shane, what was the setting? Was this a conference? What was this? Um... Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, I was in Sydney for a highly accomplished teacher conference, which is like a national conference. And then mm -hmm. luckily enough, on the Monday I, I after like their, that, I like this their AI and education one. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, hat, yeah, right? so that was, yeah, that's right. The hat, hat process. So um, I yeah. uh, became a, a hat teacher, a highly accomplished teacher about, ooh, what's it now, about um, seven years ago six years uh -huh. ago and so it's a separate ai it's a really wonderful thing our system has implemented uh it started 10 years ago where if you wish to stay in the classroom but get a promotion then you mm -hmm. can achieve a level called highly accomplished teacher which allows you to be recognized for the extra skills that you bring but mm. then you stay in the classroom so you don't have to become a deputy or a head of curriculum and stop teaching to get that step up in in pay so uh, i think it's a really good thing systemically that um, australia introduced about 10 years ago and then each year once you become a highly accomplished teacher there's a national conference where all hats are able to go for free if you can get yourself there um and um and if you can get a ticket because uh, there's did space and um i was at that conference on the thursday friday and that was uh awesome as usual to share with a whole bunch of engaged teachers fabulous hi bob that's great yeah really cool shane shane only has what 10 minutes left to go back to class so we're focusing on his yeah his uh thinking right now and what's going on um you were able to share writing partners with a couple of people a couple of your colleagues signed up we're, yeah, that was cool. So at the 
say in education conference I was a panel member because this was going to cost us $995 for a ticket for one and because I was paying it myself, I went, well, I can't afford that for a single day conference. And they said, well, if you come on and be a panel member, you can have it for free. So I became a panel member for the first ever time. And as a part of that, I shared um, writing, uh, writing partners. And so I had some people chasing me um, afterwards going, oh, what was that? Um, what was that website you're talking about? So yeah, I've um, hopefully Paul's had a few. So you've had a few contacts through Paul? Yes. One in particular, cool. But yeah, the, the, from Catholic uh, Catholic school in yeah, near near Sydney. Lovely. But yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll see what. Happens. Yeah. Um. While you're here, I, I something that um. Like we build things and we don't have time to talk about them, but one of the things that you noticed. Um, I'm going to share a screen and maybe pop this up if I can. Probably. Is that your two stars and a wish? Um, yes. Yeah. So yeah. yeah that, talk I about really that. Like yeah. Oh, I found it. Sorry. Is that here? Yeah, here it is. I'm sharing properly, am I? Yes. Yeah, yeah. That. So trying to figure out how to make this accessible to third graders, right? And it was Marina's idea to use two stars and a wish um, and combine it with uh, habits of mind. These are two habits of mind. So this is, uh, this is where we are with this design. We figured out how to bring some images in like every time. Mm. It does. You, you just say, "Hey, use this. Use this code, right? Not a big deal." But um, the language is also um, geared toward a third grader. We hope uh, of some interest, but also pushes the writer a little bit with story magic, double value, and then here's the wish. We, you wrote this. You could do this, and then here look at wonder and your senses right and then there you know this is sort of footnotes they don't have to go but then they could play this video if they wanted to so what do you think um are we close to a form that a third grader could manage or uh i would say it's it's definitely shorter than some of the feedback we you know i, I guess i'm in high school but um you know it's pretty long the feedback so this seems pretty concise and to the point right one uh i liked where you said this and then it's like here's a good thing and then here's something you can do so it's pretty pretty concise it, it looks a little different I, I saw one that it actually had like in the uh for the the title it had the like what they'd done well i thought it was in, in the title um because mm -hmm. yeah I, images and the larger text and then bold but, but those different settings that is good for kids so that some some of the better students will read through all the information but for some of the students who are less literacy focused then they their eyes will just be drawn to the heading or drawn to the bold so it sort of hones them in on a couple of areas so that they can at least be getting those sort of headline um, acts, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's different sort of every time, obviously. <laughs> Not obviously, but yeah it, it, yeah, it doesn't do exactly the same. Sometimes these gold stars show up. I have no idea why they show up. <laughs> Sometimes they don't. Uh -huh. So, Paul, this came from Marina, or how how did you come about? Yeah, what yeah, was Marina's process? idea. Um, yeah, and I've just been trying to figure out how to make it do it, right? Yeah, how to create yeah. a prompt that makes it happen. Um, and I liked how, how you have sort of the the two stars and a wish first, and then with the habits of mind underneath. Yet again, for some some students, I'll be drawn to the two stars and a wish, whereas others might feel more comfortable with the habits of mind. So it's sort of, to, to me, you're, you're hitting a few different spots for, for different kids. 
So I don't know if you saw this either, Shane. I just want to point out that we're starting in the groups to identify who's making these bots, uh, who's making these things, mm -hmm. right? Um, just to say. And then your gas, the, you, you gave this. This is actually a wonderful student sample. I know we're running out of time with you. But um, yeah. Yeah, so it mm. like like we said, it does different things at different iterations. At different uh, times, but this yeah. is this uh this is your long and I retitled it, but long and fancy sentence. Yes. Right. Um, <laughs> what is nice and and Bob Bob Montgomery created way is it um, you can say you can keep talking to it and it keeps keeps um, adding to its response as you go so there's that right but yeah. does this does this one do more or less what you were hoping it did or uh yeah it's, it's in 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 the realms yeah this this is the sort of thing that i was i was hoping to be able to do um mm -hmm. the next step for me is to try and then get um some permission internally to go well can i actually start showing this to the kids that's right I'd love to go with it. So I'm talking to principal uh, about that now. And then uh, if I can get that green light, then I'll do the um, the request for writing partners to, like, to get approval through um, Education Queensland for us to be able to then uh, to then use it so that I can, can show that, that to the kids. So that's the, now that I'm back from the conference, that's my plan to go talk to, the, to my acting principal about can I do a little trial with this? Is there a teacher you would work with or you would just do it yourself? At this stage, I, I would just do it myself. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. There's probably one or two others who might be comfortable in this space if I, if I got the, the approval. Um, mm -hmm. But I was trying to sort of have a bit of a play and figure things out for myself first because there's, I'm, I'm the only one who sort of adapting things from an AI perspective to this level. Um, people are mainly using it to help themselves with lesson planning or not looking at it at all because it scares them too much. Yeah. yeah. What do you think you're going to need or do you know yet to get this approval? Uh, no, uh, I, I, David, I don't, I don't David know and I have, yeah. Okay. You don't know. Yeah. No, okay. but that, I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I want so you to need approval from the principal up. first. Yeah. Then, and then and you then, go to the and then, then they raise the ticket to go to our IT centrally. And then I believe what happens is they'll, they'll send you like a document that says, here's all of, here's all of our questions. So I, I believe that's the way the process works is that I have to raise it with IT, but to do that, it has to go through my principal for approval cool. first to go, yes, that's approved internally. And then it goes to them and then they would reach out and contact you and go here, this is this this is the the questions or here's the document we'll complete <coughs> to give us the information we're ready to do that or we will be cool. very very soon <laughs> cool. yeah. all right cool do you have to run or what else is oh, you you did have a couple of articles and slideshows cool. that you wanted to share and oh yeah, yeah. So I, I, I just wanted to share to, to to share some of those. Just knowing that I wouldn't have enough time to talk through them, but I just people to have a look. There was some good information there about some of the statistics about how AI is um, being used and um, and some of the difficulty with it, it for error detection and that sort of thing. If people have to take back to their context, there was some information there for a couple of the speakers and then, the, um, uh, and then some information about how um, Shalanda, how I thought she had a good um, uh, a good sort of way of setting up, well, how can we use AI about whether you can use it for um, planning, whether you can use it um, for assessment and whether you use it with kids. And, um, and there were a few just, I thought, good ways of framing the the way I, AI can be used in different elements of um, of schooling, so um, so I, I get, thought a fair bit of that I think was was self explanatory when people had a look at it. I'll get that up to the uh, 
community of practice and then we'll see from there yeah so i just thought people would have a bit of a look look there and and i suppose we could maybe trigger conversations for another time or, or, or something but just it's a knowing i wouldn't have enough time to talk about all of that I, I thought if i could at least share those couple of documents that might help uh stimulate some thought for people great cool, cool. well unfortunately <laughs> I've got to get going to go well, and grab That's like. why we thank you first. Thank you. Thank you for uh, sharing with us. Thanks, Shane. My pleasure. Thank, thank you for letting let me monopolize this section of the meeting. Cool. Have a lovely night, everyone. Bye. <laughs> thank you. And you have a good day. <laughs> Will do. Okay. All right. We're just kind of free floating here. Um, who wants to talk next? Hey, Bob. How well, are what, you? Um, where we left off last week, you know, I'm. It's been week. finals week, so I kind of just remember last week and haven't done a lot in between there. Um, what happened with the image annotation with 4.0? Yeah. 4 .0? So, should we look at that a little bit? Let me see. Or do you want to play with it yourself? Or have you played with it yourself? Hey, Bob, have you played with 4.0 yet? Not, not, not through now. Comment. I'm. No, I mean at all. Oh yeah. So what have you been doing? Uh, well, I'm d building bots in PlayLab. Uh, to. Yeah. Are they using 4.0? Yeah. You can. Okay. You've got. To, you can pick between a, a few different. You know. Uh, a few different LLMs, but yeah, I'm, I'm focusing on 4.0. I mean, I'm noticing it's 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 producing. I, four, I meant 4.0, the the new yeah. one. But yeah, it, yeah, it yeah that's. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of I'm just trying to figure out if 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 it's if it's giving me more um, more than I need. I, I mean, it, that what am I noticing? Is that mm -hmm. it feels like it's just just throwing you know, massive responses out and I'm trying to figure out how to uh, filter control and, you know, con you know, dose, you know, manage the dosage that of information. Do you want, do you want to show us some of what you've been working on? I'd be glad to um, see if you want to. Bob, did you sign up for, are you in that cohort right now with they're running yes. sort of a, are you yeah. in that, that, I don't know if it's a PD or just an orientation they're running of that sprint. Are you, are you in that one now? The first one? I'm in that one. Yeah. So, you know, to, we, I just finished a session today and we were focusing on just advanced prompting strategies the, the today it was, you know, the meta prompting, uh, negative prompting, um, you know, just really trying to go from a 75% of what I'm, you know, what we're looking for to, to 95% in terms right. of how, are those how, those ter those terms you're using there, Bob? Negative prompting, meta prompting. Are those the equivalent of in this space and the writing part? Is is that the equivalent of a thinking partner? Like the meta prompt? Is that a certain lens or a certain well, way? Of, what what's the term? I mean, yeah, no. The the whole thing is is a thinking partner. I mean, yeah. we're building a chat bot, so we're building thinking partners. But the information provided, whether it's the background, which is you know context and whatnot or and persona or the um the workflow are all mapped out and what one one just general noticing is when i look at now comment thinking partners i just see a bunch of words just like tons of text no structure just tons of and that's my recollection i haven't looked lately but of a thinking yeah. partner was just it's it's not easy to to look at the structure and understand the workflow and that's one of the big things that i'm trying to practice in in play lab is you know really being clear on the background the workflow um the the things not not to do the examples of what i'm looking for and uh kind of uh final final tips you know like just creating formulas for understanding exactly a good template to a thinking partner. So that's the one takeaway is how to templatize a thinking partner into clear strategies. That and does the, inter does the interface, that, yeah, does the interface and play lab, um, 
does it does it set up those scaffolds that you're describing those modules for those it, it starts out with it, it it gives you a template uh, uh -huh. off the gate but you can just delete that and paste stuff in or you can you know use the kind of template it provides but it, it's it's trying to create you know easy ground ground rules for 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 thinking partner design mm -hmm. and i don't know i mean have we have we produced anything in the in the now comment thinking partner space that kind of when you look at it you can see the different components of of it Wait, you know we've we've started to <laughs> yeah i think that yeah, would be really a, cool mm -hmm. to explore further do you have do we have a thinking partner that when you look at you can you can kind of scan and see how the the the, the design is implemented um i would say probably on the if you're on the you would have to be involved in it to to see yeah, yeah. it's not easy so, but but aditya what what's your thoughts on that do you how, are <laughs> okay <laughs> goodbye <laughs> maybe I'll, I'll, I'll just... no no no, no. Um, and so one of the things, one of the things that we started to do is sorry, like, my whole like mute a, bar bar down oh. the camera and mic just disappeared, so I had to reload to get it back. So when you build a thing, when you build a thinking partner or a writing partner, how do you, do you how do you like you think about persona? You think about there were like four P's that we were playing with, and there is a there's now a pop up box that I haven't populated yet. Where you're going to try to describe each of those each of those. So you know, persona, purpose, protocol, and um, and product. Um, yeah, that, that, that's that's try to think about. And and certainly we could. It would be quite possible to you know just instead of one box there, there'd be four boxes. You'd fill in those four boxes. That's that's kind of what you're imagining. And there could be little instructions for each of those boxes. Is that would that be helpful or closer or what do you think? That would be interesting. I'm just uh, thinking I'm, about the way I format each of my like thinking partners. It's just some of them are very different from each other, and I'm thinking that sometimes that flexibility is nice, <laughs> like having the ability to um, kind of go about your prompting in a different way from what you normally do. Sometimes that's nice to do. I think it would be really powerful for us to each have mm -hmm. a now comment document that <laughs> consists of our various thinking partner designs. And then we annotate each other's designs with noticing and sense making and questions of, of that design. That would be really cool because I think as, as, as thinking partner designers, it's mm -hmm. really powerful to see and discuss different strategies that you know we're each using when we design a thinking partner or a writing partner and that really feels like a skill that we should use now comment to practice uh analyzing and and discussing each other's methods of organizing the the, the virtual assistant the companion that we're hoping for and it's so interesting to to watch how unpredictable the companions are, mm -hmm. you know, it's fascinating. But I just love the tuning that I think we could, if we could create opportunities to share our various designs and and tune and give feedback on them, that would be really cool. Do you want yeah, to do it? At some point, at some point, it'd be good, Bob. If you, when you talked about templatizing a writing uh, or a thinking partner. I didn't really exactly know what you meant. So maybe if you could show yeah, some let me just, what you've been working on. Can I share a screen? Let's see if I Yes, you can. Hey Bob, while you're let me throw one more one thing at you while you're doing this too. Does um does play AI include the ability to thumbs up, thumbs down? Is there any sort of improvement mechanic inside the the AI's responses? You know, the question about how to make these things smarter and verify it's going down the right track as opposed to just sort of expecting the algorithm to spit something back and see what happens and then put more text and see what happens. Is there any sort of systematic um, reward mechanic that you're asked to do as a user as part of your own workflow or is that not there yet? 
Um, I'm okay. sorry, I should let you do to your, 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 your multitasking. Which, which one am I sharing? Which, are you That's guys seeing the student question, agency? Though. Yeah, you're yeah. seeing student agency, yeah. All right. Um, I, I mean, if, so here, here's the, this is sort of the, inter the welcome message to start interacting with the, the bot. This bot is, this is a really technical bot that I built, which is really designed to give teachers feedback on their lesson plan. And, and the name of formative assessment, the particular areas of the lesson plan that are, that are basically activities and how they're designed to elicit evidence of learning while the learning is happening, and then how to interpret that evidence, and then how to frame, well, I can just show you. So he, he, wait, wait, you, you wrote, you gave the title and you wrote that little introduction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, everything is everything I've written here is you know defined in the settings or you know okay. and, and I yeah. could edit and then I can run the, the 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 assistant by hitting start here and now I can mm -hmm. I get my welcome message and then I can basically say I'm you know doing you know I'm an eighth grade um, I'm teaching eighth grade English okay great now it's prompting me to submit the aspect of the lesson plan that it can give me feedback on so this is a this is a really kind of technical thinking partner but it's one that i'm working on right now and so what i if i just take I'm gonna copy and paste uh activities from a lesson plan here i'm just gonna paste it in and just and then i'll then i'll go i just paste it in activities and then this is uh, the meta prompt in action here. So it's basically going to try to build a relationship with me, show some empathy in explaining how the thinking feedback is going to happen before it happens. So in in the design, that's basically be, in that step two. Before you provide feedback on the learning test, explain how you're going to generate that feedback and then ask if there are any questions before here it is do you have any questions before i provide feedback on your learning test so th this is i mean literally just an hour ago i was trying to figure out how to add what what's called meta prompting and that's building that connection with the the, the, the learner or the user to trust and care and 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 feel a connection with the the, the assistant that, that's being designed. So step three is it defines the resources that have been uploaded. So I've created a list of references that will inform the feedback you know, here. And I, I can see all the other resources, the various people in my cohort have up to, uploaded, but these are the ones that I've inserted. So in a nutshell, I can use the tool in, in the left and then I can see, how do I close this? Yeah, how do I close that? Yeah, I can see the design or the workflow. So it's a it's a series of steps, asking for things, explaining how the feedback will be constructed. Um, sometimes the bot jumps to giving feedback before it's really clarified or receives the the, the information to give feedback. And so here's a step that said, "Don't give feedback until." The teacher has shared the strategies for next steps because sometimes the bot just jumps to feedback and so trying to figure out how to get it to behave yeah i was, I was workflow is a challenge that, that's something i was i've been really puzzled by is how to how to get the bot to sort of respond in flow and how far you can go with process learning before it you know are there cues and maybe as the learner user you have to put in i mean this is a really interesting demonstration of what it might mean to program with language. Like if, yeah, if I'm the person entering my content and I know that I want feedback at a certain point and I put a Q word in there, it's basically hard coding a command line of some kind. Right. Yeah. But, um, so you're finding that with nine steps, sometimes the bot just kind of misses steps six and seven and jumps to eight or something like that. Sometimes it can. Yeah. Sometimes. And so then you have to go back in and put in, um, so, um, what was the term we use? I think it, I think it's actually called a negative prompt, which which is don't do this. Um, and that, I think my attempt th this is a negative prompt, step seven, um, and 
it's all an experiment in, in trying to get it to perform a productive role. The, the conversation rules are at the end as well. Um, mm -hmm. the, so the overall format is background, workflow, conversation rules. And that, and that, that background workflow, these are terms you, you name for your custom. This, this is the template of playlab.ai. Those three okay. things are the way they, that's how they do it. Got that, it. That's how they, I mean, and, and you can just delete and put anything you want in there. I, I'm and I, I'm doing I'm numbering steps. Some people just put step one and they put five bullets, and it uh -huh. seems to work too. For you know, I'm trying, it's it's all a big experiment to figure out. And you know, yeah, you guys e can even, easily do this yourself. Even negative prompts are, are an experiment, by the way. I think exactly. There's yeah, some totally. There's some research yeah. that suggests that that the new models don't don't do negative prompts so well. But you know, experiment and see if it works. We'll see. Exactly. Yeah. It's all it's yeah. totally yeah. true. Yeah, well, I so guess I, my go question ahead. was gonna be if naming the step like to do the headers make a difference. Uh but you're not sure yet, right? I'm not totally sure. Yeah. I, I'm exactly. And Bob, the there was a view I, you had where you had you had a the third frame. We were looking at the resources you were you were dumping into this into this yeah. agent that are designed to provide background for the agent this just was developed where it can it, it will give me feedback on my design so i can use the play lab assistant to, to get an analysis of my design yeah i could hear the settings are you know where i define the welcome message and you know the description and and sort of starter input options and then the references are what i can upload as documents that inform the prop the workflow have you been able to interrogate the bot and say um at step eight say draw on a key detail from yes article b04 oh there we I, go does I, it I mean, do I, that I, I, yeah i can do that uh, this I, I got i don't i'm not happy with this being used as um I don't want the user to see the name of the documents. I want it to be summarized in, in more intuitive language. But I do think specifying which steps refer to which documents is is absolutely important and appropriate. If if you know, and yes, you can just name. Make sure you, you know, use this document for this step and use this document. Nice. Are you finding that the bot's responses when it does correlate to step three that in fact step three reflects a cons a, a summarization of student agency and the instructional practices that support agency for example i think so but it's still early i mean i mean it, yeah. it, it's all it's so over it's almost overwhelming to kind of design and analyze how well it's working and it takes mm -hmm. time and as paul knows you know like you really need to iterate and it's like a five-hour process probably to get a good yeah. thinking partner figured out but you know well, yeah. And the thing is, you need to iterate it on different texts too, yeah. or different. Yeah. So that's what's tricky. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but you need, yeah. you need to test it with all kinds of scenarios. And you need to test it when people don't follow directions. Um, mm -hmm. That's another key piece. They don't, if they don't do what they, you know, you, yeah, they don't yeah. do what they're, you expect. It, what will your bot do? How will it handle random entry? Mm. <laughs> um. Can, can I can can I show another one you built? <laughs> and and I well, did that was I, really helpful. Thanks for yeah, sharing sorry. that. Sure. No. Thank. Thanks for just letting me kind of share the breakdown. I think. I mean, there are some pretty powerful features here that feel, you know, more supportive of of testing and building and understanding. Even having a, a tool to give feedback from an assistant. It's all. It's all very cool. Yeah, the breakdown in those three buckets. I mean, if everyone's authoring to those three buckets, there's something to be something to be learned from that formatting. Yeah, big time. Cool, cool. So um, I'm sharing my screen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Am I sharing? Yes. Yep. Okay. So, so Bob, you created this one. Sorry. 
Is Bob still here? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, and, and I did what you suggested while you were <laughs> uh, talking there. I, we, we, we can analyze your uh, assessment of it. I wanted to show what it did first. Um, okay. Right. So here's, here's the text. Um, and here's, you say, I just have it say, can you help me with this essay? Right. And you have it say, I'm happy to help you, right? Um, but which of these, you then give it three things to think about. Where are they? The, the challenge, Paul, is, yeah. is, kind of, is, is what's the source that, you're, that, you're, that a learner or user is going to contribute to the, to the thinking partner? Is the source something I'm going to type into a field, or is it something I'm going to highlight see, as a but, document and now comment? That that's the dilemma I I I'm I think okay. I've moved away from, which is I'm not going to the source is not a document. The source is to be entered by the learner and but what what and, well okay but that's that's one possible source. <laughs> yeah, but, but and I, I'm not sure. I, and, and, and it, right, I'm not convinced that's what we need in classrooms, though. No. Uh, um, maybe, maybe, but and maybe it's somewhat useful. Um, but I'm not sure yet. I I do think that yeah, right. So now comment is a, a form factor on top of the uh, on top of yeah. the AI, and if and so, there is that value or not. Right. You know, just to, I'll, I'll throw this out there, listening to both of yeah. you talk about this. You're describing a, stu a, a, a learner facing tool, Paul. I mean, there are other issues one can talk about in terms of interface, but you're describing a learner facing tool. And Bob, you're describing a educator, a teacher authoring system. Well, it could, I, I'm working with teachers as the target learners, but a student could also be using. Yeah, students, sophisticated students can do the same thing. Absolutely. Yeah, I think it would be interesting, Paul, to take one of your thinking partners and and, and replicating it in PlayLab.ai, and then basically doing a just doing a a to a a b comparison. Like, okay, what would it look like to have a student yeah. interact with this thinking partner, where they're entering I, I, the data Bob, I, I, and, get, and basically that. they're having a I conversation. Okay. Anyway, yeah, but uh huh, yeah. I mean, oh, what I, is this just, called? Um, PlayLab, PlayLab.ai. You can Thanks. sign up for yeah. Yeah. And I and I can I can create so, I can create a workspace and invite you guys yeah as well if we want to experiment there. But I think, Paul, I think the interesting idea is to compare. The, comp the the ability for the tool to, to be in a conversation have a re like how well does each tool facilitate a relationship between the learner and the partner that's the key question i'm wrestling with is is how is that relationship um, defined and how much agency is given the learner to use it in you know in a, in a Group in a flexible set of ways, and and so what 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 I wonder is if if the now comment structure which has the left pane, can the left pane not be anything but an open field for the learner to type into? Yeah, is that possible? Yeah, yeah, that's the discussions. Yeah, yeah, and and the eighth grader, uh, Aditya did. There's there's a lot of really good work around that, and and it all yes. And the advantage is oh. you can use different what were you saying? different the so there are three there are three pos there are three form factors, right? There's there's text that you're reading, right. there's 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 text that you've written and or are writing now, and there's discussions. And discussions yeah. start with just your question. And then you invite a thinking partner or a writing partner to give you feedback on whatever you've put in that field. So that that is a really exciting use case that Aditya and his, your students did. 
you recognize that, right? It was the difference there, Aditya? Yeah. Yeah, like where I layered one thinking partner on top of another on top of another. Yeah. I think like in that case, each of my thinking partners would be like each one of the steps in the, in the play lab program where like first mm -hmm. you're creating the arguments, then you're creating evidence for the arguments, and then you're fact checking the arguments, and then you're refuting set arguments. And then, so I think it's very similar, except that it's, I'd say, a slightly more almost clunky interface because then you have to go into the drop down and select each new thinking partner rather than just being able to put it all in one. Mm -hmm. so, so, so are you saying, Aditya, that the, each step in the workflow is a different thinking partner and now comment? Yeah. That's yeah. what I've that's what I've been doing whenever I'm like yeah. having for debates and things. I'll yeah. start, it doesn't, it I'll doesn't have with, to be, and the old one sticks if you don't if you don't change it. But just as a, what what do you say stick? Yeah, the old one. The other thing. Yeah, part. like the one you used before stays there until you change yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I just found it like slightly easy, slightly easier to like just put everything in a separate one. And it also kind of helped me out whenever I'm trying to iterate and edit it because I'm editing each one separately. It just like makes it annoying. I was thinking like, what if you could essentially make it so that you could apply the thinking partners in a predetermined order, which I think is very similar to what Play Lab is letting you guys do with step one, step two, step three, step four, yeah, et cetera. Yeah, there's an interesting kind of order, right? And now comment, you you start with a text or a discussion or a prompt, and then you select your 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 your, your thinking partner, or your workflow step. In PlayLab, you start with your step and you you enter your content into that. So it's a, it, it's literally like a flipped metaphor. Yeah, I'm also thinking about like what you said about negative. That, does that feel significant? I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah. Perfect. I feel like yeah. I use negative prompting a lot. It's extremely useful when you're trying to tell your AI to, as you said, not do something. Kind of make sure that it doesn't do a specific behavior. Like I've used it, for example, uh, I was I created an AI that fact checked. Um, it's like so. I had one, as I said, with the multi-step workflow. I have one AI that cr that creates evidence, and then I have another AI that double checks that evidence. Like you know, starts that process off. So I told it something which was, I think, very important. I told it to not make up sources. If it can't find a thing, just tell me you can't find it or that that's a false thing. Yeah. Don't make up something for it. And I think yeah. that's extremely useful in that kind of bot. Like you don't want your uh, source. If, you want, if you're creating something specifically to give you sources, you don't want it to give you fake sources. Great point. I think that, you know, it's, it's clear that the bot, you know, at least the chat GPT 4.0 is really inclined to try to please you and make you happy and uh, giving it, a, you know, requesting that it not err on the side of something, to, you know, versus nothing is really, really great point. I don't think the model does that. By the way. <laughs> I think, I think the product does that. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. So the, I'm referring to the product. You're right. Yeah. I don't know how. Yeah. So, yeah. So I guess well, I'm not if, sure. If utilizing yeah. negative prompting, you're essentially take, telling it to that doing nothing will make you happier than doing something wrong. Right. Or or yeah, just making up something random. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's so, great. Paul, I think I think I really love the idea. If if when when and if you feel like it's appropriate to, to to have a session where we're really analyzing our prompt design. Okay. Um, so basically creating documents that are our prompts and then looking and asking questions, highlighting, and it's traditional now comment one-on-one. -on -one. Like, let's go back to the original now comment scenario. We each have a document that has our prompt design and we're basically annotating. If get, leave, AI, leave AI out of the feedback. Just, we're the ones giving each other feedback on our, on our prompt designs. Uh -huh. That would be cool. So let me just uh, make sure it's here. I think it is. Oh, yeah. So here's your prompt, right? 
for the one we were just looking at briefly. Cool. And I would, I would probably enter something else, but yeah, this is exactly what I'm talking about. So yeah. Put the, put the flow workflow in and then, then let's take a chance to, you know, make noticing and sense making. I mean, what you took the chance on, on this one and it works and it's four O by the way, is to say, stop right here before you go further, have the person just like you were saying here, you say, you say this, right? Here are the three habits of mind. Um, which one do you want to go ahead with? Right. right. And it does that. Yeah. It says, do not define them. Just, you know, try to help, help the learner, you know, learn about and them. Ask, ask the user. So it would be useful for you to go in and say why you did what you did here. Right. As well. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. That, that's a good, I like that. So we each annotate the, the rationale of our various components of the workflow. I think that's the key here, Paul, is that the thinking partner in this case is as a workflow. It's not just give feedback, keep giving feedback, keep you, it's basically a series of, of, of input and output. It's a conversation. And that's, that's the main thing. I think we might be yeah. different with your, yeah, with your thinking partner model. Paul's listened to me go on about this be again and again, and I can't help but say it in relation to this part of the conversation is that when I think about a writing process, and Chris, this has come up with and inspired by some of the stuff you've done in terms of the way you've compressed or broken out your prompt systems. It's like how much can the the system hold in state, right? So if you break out steps in a in a in a in a writing process and a complex prompt is tuned only to the first step and say the first step is 20% of the effort, the chances that those prompts and those criteria and the, all the input that you're doing as a learning designer or as a prompt designer, they would be very, they're, they're applied to it. The, 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 the focus is more narrow because you're not trying to speak to the whole assignment. And I'm wondering if um, the depth of detail you're talking about, Bob, in your prompts, would be the results would be better or different if you are if, if it's a task-based thing so you go through your first step against a very narrow uh, identified task then you take your finished copy and you move it into the next task and so the the field of view that the bot's looking at is is more constrained am i making sense in terms of what i'm prescribing yeah yeah i, I think so but i mean in the current model, Chris, are we most likely, you know, having a piece of writing and then asking for comprehensive feedback, or are we kind of here's a piece of writing and I I want to I want to coach you in a process that might take 10, 15 minutes where I'm going to ask you questions. You're gonna you're gonna highlight areas that you think represent these questions, and then I'm gonna give you feedback on those areas, and we're gonna move on to something like it. it, it. Um, yeah, I'd have to go back. I know, I remember um, a prompt, I forget which one it was, but specifically asking like, no, don't go on until you know I respond or something like that. And it did skip over that. So I don't, again, it would probably be looking at how that was structured. So Bob, it's probably helpful to look and how that went i just yeah. remember thinking at the time well that didn't work uh and you know there's like a bunch of kids that need something to do in the next little bit so yeah um the more complex things like david's talking about it did seem to focus on the first stuff and just go on with that but i'm just, i'd have to go back and remember which thinking partner that was yeah so I, I'm not finding the perfect example here, but I just want to show you very quickly. This is this is my, and it's it's impossibly long, but um, there's a there's a table of contents at the top. This is how I use oh, this is how I use ChatGPT, right? I I come in, I ask it a question, uh, um, I choose a, a quickly choose. And it gives me response. This was, this was a, a um, 
David made this one, for example. Um, I then, I then, you know, found that too overwhelming. Said, you know what? Can you just summarize that for me? So it summarized it for me, right? And then I had some other further thoughts. Went back to the machine learning bot, right? And then I came out and wanted a uh, wanted a conversation with the thinking and interdependent. It's so interesting, Paul, that you are as the learner acting as a conversation, the, and that's the, the similar thing that the. What? Yeah. Just, I just want to share. Noticing mm -hmm. in the scenario you're describing, you are driving the interaction. In the scenario I've been working on, the 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 coach, the virtual assistant, the the, the companion is. Ha basically has an agenda. It, it, it is trying to, you know, perform a role. And it is driving the conversation by asking questions of the learner. So there's a fundamental difference between you trying to get AI to do what you want and AI trying to get you to give information to it. And that's what I think the thinking part. And which classroom, doing. which classroom do you want to be in? Honestly, yeah, I, mean, I, I think I think you've pointed out a really good thing, and and there is some yeah. research to, that that we should consider about, you know, do do bots really are they close to what a mentor does, or is what we're doing closer to what a mentor does, because it it puts the it puts the conversation in the hands of the of the learner. I I think. I don't think it's true that a, a, a workflow removes the agency of the learner. I think but it I, can. It, well, it, 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 yes, it certainly could. I agree. Um, but if I'm a learner and I'm trying to get better at something and I'm going to use this this coach, which has a process and a, and a, you know, a mindset that's been designed, that might be a lot easier for me to benefit than asking me to figure out how to pick a thinking partner on some, I mean, I think, I think Aditya is a, is the exception as someone capable at the student level of actually designing his own thinking partners. I think designing thinking partners for students that, that not, that don't just answer single questions, but can embody a coaching process. I think there's still a lot of agency for them even though they don't build it, they just use it. Okay. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I don't think Aditi is that unusual. I mean, they, a lot of the students made their own um, as well. Yeah. And it's simple. Was, you know, and, well, go ahead, Aditi. What? I was looking through Now Comment just now and I realized, um, you know, I, I had that friend who, who I had invited to Now Comment just just for like the debate stuff. And he's all, he's already gone off and made like nine thinking partners or something. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, eight practically was the one, one that I, he made as a joke. Yeah. I mean, Bob, probably we don't need either or, right? We need, we do need well-designed bots, but I want to, yeah. Well, I, I think the thing about now comment that is really powerful and can't be done in PlayLab is the ability to select text for in for feedback. So so you you know to have you know it's like a Socratic seminar to have the text. It's a text based conversation. You put the text on the table and yes, now is, we're, yeah. we're we're basically picking parts of it to analyze. That mm -hmm. is a fundamental now comment paradigm that is I think is really great for writing. I would never say that PlayLab can do that. But so where, I mean, and it is, I, where will teachers use these bots is, is, a, is a good question, right? So yeah. I, that's, I'm waiting to see that. Because I, there is some chatter out there about, you know, we got all these bots, who needs them, right? <laughs> but I, having a purpose for the bot feels really important. But you're not saying anything different to that, right? I just Yeah, and no, I think that I think that's right. I mean, 
I, I love the ability for anyone to create bots. That's powerful. And that, you know, like mm -hmm. the play lab ability to, I can, any, any bot that's I can access, I can instantly create my own copy of and start remixing. That's cool. I mean, and so, you know, that the student can certainly take that route of say, well, that, that's an interesting coach. I'm going to copy it and make my own version of it. And I'm going to use that because that's exactly what I need. And I, I mean, but does now comment also like let you do that? You can, I like, I'm in the, yeah, uh, the, yeah I can like a random thinking partner yeah. I don't have access to. You can duplicate uh, it. And then I can just duplicate it. Yeah, agreed. You can't, I mean, uh, now comment does that too. But I think that the, the, the the ability to find thinking partners and to and to review them, even look at their 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 use. I mean, that's so, PlayLab does that, which is kind of cool. So you can you I can see the every conversation that anyone has with with my with my bot. Mm -hmm. For, you know, and I guess you can too, right? I mean, but you just can't do it by bot. You can, but you can still do it in. We the, we could set that up, yes. That's not, you know, we haven't decided to do that yet. Right. Um, That'd be so cool. Let me just, I, what, what I think, what David and I talk about a lot is, um, you know, we have a dozen thinking, writing partners for the college admissions essay. Three of them work at the beginning, four of them work after you have your first draft done, you know. So, I think PlayLab and we have the same problem, right? Which is we have all these bots floating around. How do teachers integrate them into their practice? Yeah. Right? Um, and so that's the interface we need. Yeah. <laughs> like right? how to bookmark the, your your favorite bots and you know kind that's of have those separated from all the others. It's I about, it's about how the interface recognizing where you are and saying, hey, here are three bots that would be useful, right? That'd be I cool feel if we separated like all the bots out into different categories beyond the simple coach, beyond the regular coach, uh, to, uh, coach, yeah, student, yeah. mentor, et cetera, I think that could be helpful. Like if we keep all of the debate focused bots in a different section and all of the, uh, what are we talking about? Um, college essay bots in a, a different section and then we like add subheadings like a uh, beginning middle end mm -hmm. and i was also thinking about how like if, if i were just going to now comment as a first time user with nobody like really teaching me what to do i would like my, my friend when he first got on now comment was extremely confused like and i feel as though without really peeling back the curtain so to speak looking at like how each bot is really designed. Like I could just, if I just went in and tried to use a bot, I wouldn't exactly know where to start unless someone like told me. Like if I just mm -hmm. select a random now comment bot, I'd probably need to, to spend a few minutes figuring out what it does and how it doesn't before I could really start. Whereas with uh, the thing with Playland is that you could just very easily see like buy and then get every most of the stuff from what the bot does in the conversation itself. And I think all for that, if we want to keep now comments, like um, kind of user input and then response format is probably we need better explanations as to what the bot does beyond a simple title and summary. Mm -hmm. Ditya, those are really helpful comments. Yeah. Thanks. Let's keep the dialogue going. I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is, um, it's pretty thought provoking though. Um, wouldn't it be nice if somehow all, all these tutors knew where you were in the writing process and said, oh, or felt, or, you know, you communicated quickly, like, oh, you're, you're writing a narrative right now. And here's some things to think about. Yeah. Or, or, or Chris, at the beginning of your, 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 design you would describe what what type of this is back to your point of detail act, activity or coaching are you seeking and then that would limit the entire list down to the five or six thinking partners that are relevant for that activity i think it's really challenging when you see a long list of things to kind of 
yeah. you guys sort through it. It can be a little overwhelming at first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but, but bundling them by, by type of activity or outcome would be really cool, I think, and make them a lot more probably usable. What if we had just one like bot that told you exactly what you needed and uh, where to go, like like, like you know, like on the side of like like sites like travel sites, for example, they'll have Not their own like customer service bot. What yeah. if we just think it's like, uh, okay, what are you trying to do? Oh, I'm trying to uh, get arguments for debate. Okay, here's the bots, and here here's the bots that you can use. Here's the order in which you should use them, and yeah. You know, yeah. Up there. yeah, that's an awesome idea, Ditya. However, I mean, I'm totally down with that. But what's your my latest experience getting chatbots? I mean, they tap out, right? They're they're smart to a point, and then they can't sort of respond to your nuance, but because, and so I, I'm, the intelligence in those bots. I mean, this industry is driven almost. I don't know what the percentage is, but it's bound to be pretty high about delivering high quality customer service stuff. And it could be low end ticket master stuff. It could be high end health concierges. There's logic and nuance for each discipline, but there's a point at which it taps out. Um, but, and so I'm wondering if how hard it would be, you know, there's a, there's a certain limit when you walk on to now comment or writing partners, you're seeking to do a certain kind of genre work. And even if it's a family of, teachers who are working on a certain discipline, whether it's UDL or whether it's essay writing, you can break down potential paths within that project and you could get that kind of response pretty reliably. Totally. Yeah. Is this I mean, what you're saying? It is a good idea. I, mean, I could imagine yeah. sort of a funnel on the front of it, right? Like so the, what what has limited us in is is the context that we could like we didn't have enough space. Now that we have 300 pages to work with, we can absolutely ask it to here are here are 15 writing partners. Help the writer choose the ones they that yeah. yeah. We could absolutely build a bot like that pretty easily. And Paul, question for you yeah. about the discussion space. Mm -hmm. If one is in the discussion space as opposed to in the place where work where one arrives with a text to annotate yeah. and, and, and query. It's conceivable the interaction Bob's describing and what Aditi is describing. Say you open it up and you're in sort of like AI playground or discussion space. Yeah. The bot begins similar. by saying, yeah. what are you working on? And if you're going in there mm -hmm. coming from Dr. Early's class, you know you're going to be there to do a college essay. And then the funnel experience, like which stage of the essay are you at? And then maybe mm -hmm. it's a five bot, you click one of five pieces and then it spits up another question it goes through kind of a fully scripted wrote demonstration the out point of which is to send you into a curated collection of bots right it's all kind of hard coded in that regard but it's simply a funnel experience to guide you into the discussion space is that workflow yeah. sound rational Does well i'll uh, mm -hmm. echo aditya's point though too is because i teach seniors and they're all you know they're pretty bright people yeah, um, they get overwhelmed with, you know, the list of tutors uh, and, you know, the mentors. Um, so it is true that like my students, when they're writing their college essay, don't need to see necessarily a bunch of stuff about claims and warrants and, and things like that. I mean, you could make the case for, you know, they're making an argument and all that. But um, that specific of language uh, isn't really helpful for them on that task. So, yeah, it would be nice to have some kind of guide to you know these are some things where are you now and here's some things that might work i wonder what's involved engineering wise for folks who are not engineers to hard code that on the front end of a discussion space so that you could go to those sections in your in your labeled or your your tagged topical course that topical subject interesting yeah. It's one possibility. I, I do think it might be possible to have a consumer <laughs> consumer service bot too that would do a similar thing. Yeah, no, I think you know. But, uh, I think to Aditya's point, I think I think it's actually we're we're very we become really habituated to customer service bots, and if there was something mm -hmm. showed up that guided us to really targeted, highly curated bots that were delivering just what we needed, 
that would solve a problem for sure. It seems very doable. Bob, is, is Play Lab, does it include this kind of, what do you need now? Do you want to try this? Is, is, is what Aditya is proposing something that's in the interface that you're working with right now? I'm just curious. If, if, if you were, now you, you would design that. So okay. in, 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 the, in the interface, it's just a bunch of bots. You, you pick your bot and then you go in and you participate in the workflow it has designed for you. And you can see at any point in time, you can see the workflow. So you, so you can reveal to your, if you're not sure you're actually want to work with this bot, you just hit remix and you can in instantly see everything that's there and you can decide. But I think that's the big difference is the, the bot comes with a process. Mm -hmm. Interesting. It, 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 yeah. Versus each bot is a step in the process. And then you have to design your, you design your experience by picking each individual thinking partner. I mean, maybe that, that's step one, Paul, when you get to a document or a discussion is to, to pick which thinking partners you want to have access to when you respond with AI. So you have a different interface to select the thinking partners. It's like, what do you want to have in your menu whenever you hit select AI? Instead of everything, you can limit it at the top of the page. I don't know. Yeah. An idea. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, I think the long list is, is, is problematic. Hey, yeah, I mean, by the way, writing partners doesn't have a long list. So we've resolved that to some degree, but these are all good, yeah. good conversations still. But the so so for example, in the in the community of, of of practice, there are five to choose from, right? Um, not a long list, and but there it would, yeah. But so there are different ways to skin this, I think. But it's a really good problem. I, yeah. What if, like, when you're creating a group, you can pick a specific focus for that group, and then that group can exclusively show up thinking partners related to that focus? Like, if I'm that's what we have. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> that's what writing partners does. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Chris, for example, if your students were doing the college admissions essay, they wouldn't see the other ones. They would only see the ones related to that one. Because they're in that certain group, right? Right. Uh huh. But okay, it doesn't solve all of the problems. I mean, yeah, it does limit it to some degree. And by and most of us here are on like in multiple groups, so yeah, that's we that's, we end up seeing more than one. So that's why I so, see so many, Paul. That, yeah, yeah. And it is. when I look at the thinking partner, I'm looking at thinking uh, flexibly coach, and I look to the right at the prompt. You know, it it is a massive now comment or where are yeah, you? Yeah, I'm in writing partners. It's a it's it's a it's a massive column of text, so I can't really. To be honest with you, I am not going to read that. I might scan it, but right. it's not. You and I have talked about this. I, yeah. We're, we're, so figuring out how to represent the prompt is is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And um, may, may, maybe, maybe Paul, there's a hierarchy of really what you want people to scan and what you don't really want people, unless they really want to, to, to know. So like maybe at the top of the prompt is the work, well, whatever conditions or workflow or parameters that you want people to actually consider. And then everything below is just there for reference, but really not expected to be part of anybody's. Yeah, the, the quote unquote short description could be as long as you want it to be. So we yeah, could, maybe that's, we, that's, we, could, we could break that out a little bit. Or yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and then you could you could even I mean, honestly, hide the prompt. I mean, I, I don't understand uh -huh. if that level of information is actually. There could be a link to it if you want to see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, well, yeah. I think the way it's structured right now, that's the first few sentences of the prompt itself to AI. There could be just like a like an abstract at the top that's more yeah. user friendly. Yes as to you know those what. sentences don't go to ai by the way the description sentences but go ahead yeah yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so yeah but so we would have to ask people to write that abstract right mm -hmm. yeah. and that's important and or we and or we could help them but yeah yeah and 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 i mean 
I think the, the whole pop-up menu where you select your partner, you see the prompt, you have the question statement, all of that. I think experimenting with that, Paul, could be really powerful, like really re rethinking that to be a much bigger window and and organized in, I mean, maybe you can have gr groups of students react to different wireframes, but um, I, I think that could be a, a good path. I had an idea for the thinking partner just now. Thinking partner that takes your prompt and then gives you the summary for you. So if you want to go help them, you can just direct them. Be like, uh, oh, it could be a thinking partner. So the prompt is like, uh, take the take another uh, thinking partner prompt, and then summarize, create a two or three sentence summary of what that thinking partner does. Yeah, that's cool. That'd be a good start. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we'd, we'd want to see what it does actually. But yes, yes. I like that. Yep. Um, calling time here. <laughs> yeah. Thanks you. Thank you for staying late uh, and having this. Um, yeah, I, my final feeling about all this is I just don't, I, this has been for a year, um, something we have all been doing together and I don't want this to be me, right? Yeah. I, I really want to invite everybody to keep designing with us and yeah, together. Yeah. So, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that, it could be an interesting activity though, Paul, to, to kind of rethink the design the UI of of the of the of that box, window. yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. And that, that could be some, something we just sketch on paper and just bring and and just kind of share ideas, and then you you know you could take the best ideas back to Jeremy and see what the feasibility is of of this. But I think I think the well, what we're what we're saying so far is quite quite possible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um. All right. Thank you all. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Nice. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Bye. Good night. Thanks so much. Good night. Good night. Yes, so, so much. Thank you. Bye. Bob, you too. Bye-bye, all. Bye-bye.